good morning. We welcome you as always to this worship experience at the Jefferson Street Missionary Baptist Church where we are loved by Christ to love like Christ. And I know if you have joined us this morning, I know that you've gone through some things this week. I know you've been down this week. I know some things have been uncomfortable this week. I know you might even have a praise report this week of some things God has done well. But one thing I know, whether you're a school teacher, whether you're a student, whether you drive Uber, whether you're a cook, whether you're a stay-at-home parent, whatever your occupation has been over this week, I know one thing we have in common, and that is we can celebrate the goodness of God, and out of our hearts can flow thanksgiving and gratitude to a God that's been good to us in spite of ourselves. The psalm writer in the 116th Psalm asked the question, he said, what shall I give to the Lord for all of his benefits towards me? He goes on to answer his own question in that 17th verse, and he says, I will offer to the Lord a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Why? Because I'm grateful for everything that the Lord has done for me. If that's your testimony this morning, won't you join me in a disposition of of gratitude won't you join me in a posture of gratefulness well what does a posture of gratefulness look like gratefulness looks like my hands raised telling the Lord thank you gratefulness sounds like a hallelujah and Lord I bless your name gratefulness feels like Lord what nobody else could do for me you showed up and did come on help us sing it this morning that gratefulness is flowing from my heart I'm grateful for how you woke me up I'm grateful for how you kept me all night long I'm grateful for how you healed my body I'm grateful for how you clothed me in my right mind I'm grateful for how you loved me even when I couldn't love myself I'm grateful for how you saved me I'm grateful for how you raised me I'm grateful for how you kept my family I'm grateful how you blessed mama I'm grateful how you brought daddy through Gratefulness is flowing from my heart. Come on, right where you're watching from. Won't you let gratefulness flow? Won't you let Thanksgiving flow? Come on, church. Gratefulness is flowing from my heart. Sing grateful, grateful. J Street. Good morning, J Street. Let me be the first to come with my praise report for this morning. We want to first thank you. Me and my mother want to thank you for all the thoughts, the prayers, the cards, the posts, the everything. And I'm here to tell you that the Lord is good and that he is a keeper because this thing could have gone any way, but here I stand and I'm ready to give him praise and give him glory for he is worthy to be praised for all things. So this morning, I just want to thank the Lord. We're going to thank the Lord this morning.
Come on, clap your hands right there and just say, thank you, Lord. Come on, can you clap your hands right there and just shout, thank you, Lord. Come on, come on, come on. Can you open up your mouth and just shout, thank you, Lord. If you're in a sanctuary, can you open up your mouth and shout, thank you, Lord. If you're at home in the couch, on the couch, can you open up your mouth and just shout, thank you, Lord. If you're getting up out of the bed, can you open up your mouth and just shout, thank you, Lord. If you put food on your table, I dare you to open your mouth and just shout, thank you, Lord. If he's giving you help, life, and strength, I dare you to open your mouth and shout, thank you, Lord. If he's kept you covered and, and if he's kept you protected and if he's kept you safe, somebody, open up your mouth and say, thank you, Lord. Come on, clap your hands right there and just shout, thank you, Lord. Things could be a whole lot better, but I'm so glad that they are what they are. So right now for that, I open up my mouth and I just say, thank you, Lord. If you never do anything else for me, I'm satisfied. So somebody open up your mouth and shout, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, somebody open thank up your mouth you, and shout, you, thank you. Say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Clap your hands real fast and just shout, just shout, thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we give God glory, we give God praise. Listen, we thank him because he's a great God and he's greatly to be praised. Can you clap your hands? Can you clap your hands right here and give the Lord praise? Hallelujah. Yeah, I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what you're going to do. I 
somebody leap with joy. Come on, somebody get your joy. Somebody get your strength. Somebody leap for joy. Somebody leap for joy. Somebody leap for joy. Now come on, clap your hands right here. I know you at home, but I tell you just to take about five seconds to clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands right here. Yeah. We got to get out of here, y'all. Clap your hands in the building. Yeah, we've come to bless them. We've come to get them going. Somebody open up your mouth and give it to them. Somebody open up your mouth and give it to them. Come on, clap your hands. Clap your hands. Yeah, yeah, we bless your name, we give your name glory, yeah, now come on, clap your hands and give them glory, come on, somebody clap your hands and give them glory, I said clap your hands and give them glory, if you came to lift them up, clap your hands and give them glory, Greg, why am I clapping my hands, because he's been a good God. Why am I clapping my hands? It's because he's been a great God. Somebody open up your mouth and give the Lord glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's a great God, and we give him praise. We give him glory. We give him honor, and we love you. Come on, can you just lift your hands and just shout, I love you. You don't know what he's done for me. He's given me the victory. Somebody lift your hands and just shout, I really love the Lord. Hallelujah. The whole song that says this.
Jesus. My soul loves you, Jesus. My spirit loves you, Jesus. My mind loves you. Yeah, yeah. Clap your hands real fast and just shout, I love him. his name we're going to come to you with prayer this morning could we look to the Lord in prayer Lord we come to you first and foremost to say thank you we always want to thank you we want to thank you for being that way maker that miracle worker that promise keeper and that light in the darkness because, Lord, for sure, that is who you are. In this time, we are facing what we have never had to face before, especially in this year particularly. So, Lord, we're asking you for your grace, your mercy, and your strength for all that lies ahead of us. Lord, I pray for the health physically, mentally, and emotionally in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of all of these things that are going on. We ask that you keep us, hold us in your love and care. Lord, and then I pray for a deeper spiritual understanding through Jesus Christ, aided by the Holy Spirit that is rooted and grounded in your word. I pray that our leaders seek your guidance, wisdom, and compassion as they make decisions for the well-being of those for whom they lead and govern. Lord, I pray for your continued protection and strength for those who continue to provide essential services. I pray for comfort for the grieving and healing for those that are dealing with illness and disease. Lord, I pray for both our elders' keeping and our youth's protection. Lord, I pray those who don't know you as Savior will be able to open their hearts and their minds to receive you and your salvation. Your salvation that grants peace and joy even in the midst of the chaos, the injustice, and the dissension that we find ourselves in daily. Thank you, O oh God, for being the lover of our souls. Lord, forgive us for our actions and thoughts that aren't pleasing to you. We continue to give you the glory and the honor and the praise because you are so worthy. And then, Lord, help us in our unbelief when we are afraid because you didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power. Then, Lord, I let her ask that you allow us to walk in you daily and guide us in the ways to which you would have us to go. These things in Jesus' name that I pray with much love and thanksgiving for who you are, everything you have done, everything you are doing, and everything you will do. Amen. Amen. Certainly we bless God and thank him for the ways in which he continues to be a blessing to us. And we certainly are grateful for the way in which God showed himself to be a healer and way maker the life of Sister Kim and Sister Vicky, and we thank God for uh, her presence here with us for this service. Uh, I want to just share a couple of announcements. As you know, we're so grateful for our Sunday school teachers who are doing an outstanding job in keeping us intact with our Christian education wing. Uh, our Bible study will resume uh, one Tuesday in September. I haven't decided when we're going to come back yet, but we will be back uh, in the month of September. And so we are excited for how God will continue to stretch us and grow us and nurture us in the study of his word. We certainly thank God for Minister Cynthia Williams and Sister Tabitha Young and Sister Fanny Holmes who are helping to provide a children's church experience for our youth via Zoom. Immediately following our worship service, we try to begin at about 11.15 or so. So please uh, involve the young person in your life that is uh, under the age of 12 uh, that they can participate in our children's church experience. So grateful for the ways in which our associate ministers are leading us in prayer for our corporate time of prayer. Uh, I tell you, Reverend Griffin did an outstanding job. Reverend Arlene did a stand outstanding job on this week. 
uh, leading us in our time of prayer. And if you aren't participating, you are simply missing out on a midweek blessing that God wants to give you. Certainly, we want to remind all of our young adults uh, that uh, our uh, Soul Fuel devotional is beginning the first week of September. That information for you to text is on the screen. Uh, we want to make sure that you partner with us and that you are a part of this devotional. It's going to be fantastic as we discuss how to deal with people you disagree with. I tell you, this thing is going to be off the chain. Uh, and uh, it's going to be awesome. And uh, we are beginning today a new sermon series entitled Moments with Moses. And what we're going to be highlighting uh, in this devotional helped us in a sense to pull this out is that we look at the life of Moses. Moses has a lot of things going on in his life and in the assignment God gives him. But Moses has to learn how to manage his relationships relationships of a variety of type. And so we'll begin talking about mentors today, uh, but that devotion is going to help us and it certainly is going to be fantastic. want to again thank everybody. Uh, we're still getting cards for birthday and anniversary and so I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate you so much uh, and got to share with you simply uh, that uh, there's no church like Jefferson Street Missionary Baptist Church. And I am so grateful uh, that God has privileged and honored me and allowed me to serve as your pastor. I tell you, uh, uh, everybody don't get this kind of opportunity. Uh, and I'm so grateful for the ways in which you have continued to allow us to serve this present age. Uh, so we're looking forward to meeting with all of our leaders. Those that uh, are uh, to be in that meeting have been contacted. And we're looking for ways in which even through this pandemic, Pandemic, our ministry structure will still be strong and organized and be able to help those that need it during this season. Asking that you will continue to keep in prayer Mother Gigi Stanford in the loss of her brother-in-law. Uh, continue to keep Sister Rosemary Frazier in the loss of her sister uh, and uh, Reverend Chazen Brown, the loss of his aunt, and certainly for Reverend Roosevelt Keys in the loss of his grandmother. Uh, we're asking that you would text your prayers uh, to the number that's populated on your screen, 615-205-1002 for your prayer requests and for your praise reports. I believe that we serve a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. Uh, before we get ready to move into our sermonic selection, I do not want this moment to pass without at least addressing the continued atrocities and injustices that we see occurring within our nation. The reality is, is if you are like me, there is a numbness that has crept in to the news of another police shooting. There's a numbness that has crept in to the reality that there is another white armed terrorist shooting in the street. If you're like me, you've just become numb to so much of the violence and atrocities that plague our nation. But the truth is, is we ought never be comfortable with this situation. We ought never allow ourselves to become numb to violence and injustice. It is so vital for us to remember and to carry the mantle that we as children of God and citizens of the kingdom of God do not stand for injustice, do not comply with nationalism that ignores the plight of the oppressed. We do not uphold supremacy that pushes people to the margin. That is not what the gospel of our Savior is about. And it's incumbent upon us not only to pray, we've got to do that. Not only to beseech the Lord for change, we've got to do that. But we have to put and pray with our feet. We've got to pray with our actions. The first one is, everybody who's a member of Jefferson Street ought to be a registered voter. I'll be getting uh, this week, I'll be getting with our leadership team, we're going to include within uh, our active 
member qualifications that you've got to be a registered voter. If you're going to be a member of this community of faith in this season, you need to be a registered voter. Secondly, we've got to make sure, and you'll be getting information over the next few weeks, we've got to make sure that our seniors are armed with the needed information to be sure that their vote counts. We need to be armed with proper, we don't know to send it in the mail, we don't know if we can trust it, we don't know if we need to go early vote, we don't need to know if we need to wait on the day. We're going to partner with groups who have structured that for us so that we don't get uh, confused by the rumors and dismay that are there, but we have proper information to vote. And thirdly, we can't just stop at voting, church. We have to commit ourselves to radical justice. Radical justice will call us to challenge a governor who takes away the constitutional rights of people to peacefully protest. Radical justice will call us to look at our local police departments and say, do you need all the money you say you need to kill us in the street? Radical justice will call us to look at the injustice structures in our city, in our state, and in our nation and call us to action. And you know Jefferson Street, we are a community of faith that are not foreign to a gospel that seeks social justice. And we're not going to let, now we shout, we got the Holy Ghost, we praise God, but we are a church that seeks justice just the same. The two are not mutually exclusive. They work together. So it's my prayer that over the next several weeks we'll be getting you that information and we will rally together even during this time of pandemic to ensure that the work of justice moves forward. Amen. Let us welcome our music ministry as they come now. Song simply says, God is my everything. Can you clap your hands like this? Come on. D, can I get a little bass over there, please? Y'all know this song. Clap your hands right here. Sing, God is my everything.
God is your everything, you ought to give him a praise like it. I saw you while you were sitting at home, you just gave him a pity pat. But if God has been your everything, I'm talking about your Savior. I'm talking about the lifter of a bow down head. I'm talking about the restorer of your joy. I'm talking about a bill payer. I'm talking about a burden bearer, yes, a heavy load sharer. Yes. If God has been your everything, yes. then you ought to praise him with everything you have. So with my feet, I'll dance before the Lord. With my knees, I'll 
bow before his presence uh, with my hips. Uh, I will not sit in the seat of the scornful uh, with my heart. Uh, I keep it fixed on my Savior uh, with my hands. Uh, I clap it uh, and give him glory uh, with my mouth. Uh, I will bless the Lord uh, at all times. Uh, and his praises uh, shall continually be there uh, with my eye. Uh, I'll look to the hills uh, for which cometh my help. Uh, because all of my help, uh, I said, oh, 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 my help. Uh, it comes from the Lord. Uh, and with my mind, uh, I'll think about the goodness of Jesus. Uh, and oh, uh, Oh, 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 he's done for me, and with my soul, I cry out, thank you, Jesus, thank God for saving me, you ought to use everything, you ought to use everything, you ought to use everything to give God praise, hey, 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 He's my everything. 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 Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for being the source of our strength and the strength of our lives. We thank you that everything we have is in you. Lord, we thank you that it is in you that we live, that we move, that we breathe, and that we have our being. We thank you, Lord, that you are our everything, that you've never failed us, you've never left us, and every time we've been in trouble, you've been our present help. Lord, we thank you. You are our everything. Lord, we ask now that as we seek to hear from heaven and hear from your word, you would speak to us, Lord. Prepare now the soil of our hearts to receive a word from you. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us your word, that your word blesses us, it sustains us, it provides nourishment for our spiritual man. We pray now that you would speak to our hearts, that you would use this word to move us into the next season, the next level, this next week. We ask God that your word would sustain us. Somebody needs to be saved. Somebody needs to be delivered. Somebody needs to be healed and set free. And it's your word that won't return to us void and would accomplish what you said it would do. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer can be a word found for us in the 18th chapter of Exodus. The 18th chapter of Exodus, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation version. We thank God for being our everything. Beginning at the ninth verse, and then we will jump down to the 13th verse. I want to read the ninth verse, then we'll jump down to the 13th verse. The word of the Lord from Exodus 18 reads on this wise, Jethro was delighted when he heard about all the good things the Lord had done for Israel as he rescued them from the hand of the Egyptians. The next day, Moses took his seat to hear the people's disputes against each other. They waited before him from morning till evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing, Moses' father-in-law is Jethro, he asked him, what are you really accomplishing here? 
Why are you trying to do all of this alone while everyone stands around you from morning till evening? Moses replied, because the people come to me to get a ruling from God. And when a dispute arises, they come to me, and I'm the one who settles the case between the quarreling parties. I inform the people of God's decrees and give them his instructions. This is not good, Jethro exclaimed. You're going to wear yourself out and the people too. This job is too heavy a burden for you to handle all by yourself. Now listen to me and let me give you a word of advice and may God be with you. You should continue to be the people's representative before God, bringing their disputes to him. I want to talk this morning from the subject as we move into this new series, Moments with Moses, the importance of a mentor. The importance of a mentor. Uh, as we look at the narrative of Moses' life throughout the book of Exodus, we find that to be effective and transformative, Moses learns through both successes and failures the importance of relationships. And while we learn much about God's character and God's power through the life of Moses, we are also able to understand how our management of relationships can either help or hinder the individual assignments God has placed on our lives. My brothers and my sisters, as we take this journey the next few weeks uh, to look at the life of Moses, uh, as we study what we can about how he handled relationships, we will find that Moses' potential was either furthered or halted by his ability to manage relationships and interactions with other people. And it struck me, family, how important it is for God's people. Now, I'm not talking about the people who just claim to follow God. I'm talking about the people who do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God as Micah challenges us to. Uh, I was challenged while this week watching the RNC. I was troubled by a lot, but one speaker stuck out to me, Daniel Cameron, a black man serving as the atten uh, Attorney General of Kentucky, uh, who had time to show up to the convention and speak, but still has not given us a report or plan or presented to us how he's going to move to seek justice for the, on behalf of Breonna Taylor and arrest her murderers. It highlighted to me, family, in that moment that we all have an important assignment on our life. And some of our assignments may be to the nations, some might be to our neighborhood, but it is in this season, it is vital and imperative that we are equipped, positioned, prepared, and engaged to be Christ's representatives wherever the assignment he has placed in us takes us. And whatever space you may occupy, it's our collective responsibility as children of God saved by grace to be transformative and effective right where God has placed us. Now, I'm not talking about being perfect, and I'm not talking about next week you're going to lead a profound protest that engages thousands, but what I am suggesting is that our God is too big for us to be comfortable with mediocrity. For when Jesus was down at the Sea of Galilee in Mark chapter 7, after he healed a deaf man, the crowd looks to Jesus and says, this man does all things well. And if we are going to be Christ's representatives, we have to learn how to manage relationships well, do what we're doing well, whether it be our marriage, whether it be parenting, whether it be our careers, whether it be our ministry. Onlookers ought to be able to look at our lives and our examples in the model of Jesus Christ and say what we are doing, we are doing it well. And we find from the life of Moses one critical and vital uh, a relationship that is crucial to our ability to handle God's assignment on our life well is our relationship with mentors. Now, this may not shout you. I hope you got that out, but this is going to bless you because some of you watching may be on the sunset of your life. And this sermon will help you be 
a better mentor and realize that your voice still has value. Some of you may just be beginning or in the prime of your life and this will help you learn how to select and identify the type of people that need to be mentors in your life. Now listen, this is not just some self-help strategy. This is not just something out of business week or news week because long before mentorship was a corporate business principle, it was biblical. Don't you remember the prophet Samuel who was mentored by the prophet Eli? Don't you remember the prophet Elisha picked up the mantle from his mentor Elijah? Don't you remember Priscilla and Aquila in the New Testament mentored Apollos? Don't you remember even our Savior selected 12 ragamuffins, named them apostles and mentored them? Don't you know Paul mentors Titus and Timothy, Timothy and in our text today, we find that Jethro takes the time to have a mentoring moment with his son-in-law Moses. And we learn from this text several valuable principles about a mentoring relationship. First thing I see in the text, you need to write this down, is that there ought to be a diversity of a mentor's opinion. I'm in the text because as we're introduced to Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, Jethro is not Egyptian. He was not raised and reared and educated in the empirical courts of Pharaoh. He's not a Hebrew, so he doesn't know the journey that Moses and his people have had for 400 years enslaved. Uh, he's older than Moses. Uh, in fact, we come to find that he's a priest of Midian, so he's not even a monotheistic person who worships the Lord, our God. He is different in faith. He's different in age. He's different in race and ethnicity, and he is different in his experience than Moses is. Yet we find that Jethro, through his diversity and difference, is able to offer Moses a word of wise counsel. Come here, family. Possibly Possibly we are not effective and transformative in our assignments because we are not relying on diverse mentors to speak to us. We're relying on mentors we're comfortable with who are seen and seeking the same thing we are. There comes a time in your life where you have to make a decision that if you've got the same opinion, the same viewpoint, the same exposure, the same, the same, the same as I do, then maybe you don't need to be my mentor. You need to be my friend because at some point you can't be my mentor and we're struggling with the same issue and the same problem. You, you can't be my in mentor if we have been exposed to the same things. At some point, we have to understand that diversity can help you gain clarity. That's why the writer of Proverbs tells us that there is safety in a multitude multitude of counsel. The multitude is a diverse opinion-based perspective. Not a multitude of the same thing, but a multitude of diversity. Uh, uh, you've got to understand, family, that as you seek counsel and wisdom in your life, don't be intimidated because someone might be speaking to you from a different perspective. Find the value in their difference. That's what Jesus did. Here it is he picks 12 men who have various backgrounds. Some are fishermen. Some, one is a tax collector. Some we don't even know what they did. They might have been unemployed and couldn't keep a job. But Jesus picks them and uses them from their diverse experiences and is able to take their diversity and change the whole wide world. Jesus understood that there is value in diversity. Better make sure your mentor is able to offer you a diverse opinion. But not only do I see in the text family that there ought to be the diversity of opinion, I see in this pericope that there ought to be the sincerity of your mentor's opinion. Because here it is, in verses 14 through 18, we hear uh, Jethro's concern about how Moses is leading the people. 
uh, he is concerned about Moses' approach to leadership, uh, uh, and he questions him, and he tells him straight up that what you're doing is not only dangerous for you, but it's unhealthy for the people you're leading. Here it is, a true mentor cares enough about you and the assignment on your life to be sincere and call you out when you need to be called out. Because whom you select to help you guide through life has to not only care about you, but care about what's connected to you to tell you where you step out of line. And this is why, my brothers and my sisters, you better make sure that you get engaged with people that can be sincere about the situations in your life. Here it is, Proverbs 3 and 12. The Lord disciplines who he loves, just like a father the son he delights in. You need people around you uh, that can be sincere enough uh, to tell you when you're slipping, uh, to tell you when you're sliding, uh, to tell you when what you're doing is not the best output uh, uh, because we have confused uh, that meaningful relationships means we always have to agree. No, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Sometimes uh, you need somebody to slap some sense into you uh, and tell you where you're wrong. Sometimes you need people uh, that will tell you on the shoulder and tell you I love you enough and I love your family enough I love your marriage enough I love your kids enough I love the call and the anointing on your life enough I love your family enough I love your potential enough to tell you that you've got some things that you need to turn around and get right a real mentor has the sincerity to tell you when you're headed in the wrong direction. And Lord, forgive us for the times in which we've ended valuable relationships because somebody was telling us something that was right, but we didn't want to hear it. Lord, forgive us for the bridges we burned because people were trying to love us and care for us and tell us the truth about ourselves but we burned the bridge because we did not value the advice they were giving. Somebody needs to call somebody up Sunday afternoon when you get off of this live stream and call them and apologize and tell them I'm sorry. I realized you were just trying to help me. I realized you were just trying to tell me the truth. I realized you were just trying to Point me in the right direction and apologize. But I find out, family, that Jethro's opinion that sincere was not only sincere because he told Moses what he was doing wrong and because he was honest, but we find the sincerity of Jethro's comments and that he was not envious of Moses' success. It's going to be tight, but it's right. Because sometimes we have allowed persons into pivotal positions of mentorship in our life who are not promoting our progress, but who are in fact poisoning our progress. Because the truth is, is that they're jealous of the success. They're envious of what God is doing in your life. They're, they're upset that they missed their chance and their opportunity. And a real mentor will use their shortcomings as your springboard rather than their shortcomings as a strangulation and suffocation of what God is trying to do with you. Better be careful that people in pivotal positions in your life are really celebrating you and happy for your success and not jealous of what God has done. Well, how do you know Jethro wasn't jealous? Here it is. Moses used to work for Jethro. Jethro had to hire Moses when Moses killed that Egyptian and Moses was on the run. Jethro had to put him on payroll and now Moses has left Egypt with people calling him a leader, has left Egypt with the miracles of God following him, has left Egypt now as a nation builder. And how do you know Jethro wasn't envious of Moses? Well, you got to read your Bible because up there in Exodus 18 verse 9, when Jethro hears the good news of what Moses has accomplished through the help of the Lord. Here it is. Jethro doesn't just 
tell Moses, good job. No, Jethro begins to praise God for what Moses was able to accomplish. And here it is. Real mentors won't just celebrate you, but they'll remind you that all the glory and all the praise belongs to our God. Jethro is so inspired and is so sincere about his care for Moses. The Bible tells us that Jethro begins to have a church service all by himself. That after after Moses gets done testifying, Jethro goes to the altar and lifts up a burnt offering to God all by himself. He begins to sing a song all by himself. He begins to clap his hands all by himself until Aaron and the other elders have to come out and have church with Brother Jethro. I'm trying to tell you that a sincere mentor will always point to God and celebrate with you your success. Not only family, should there be the diversity of opinion. Sometimes people who are different can supply clarity to our life. Not only does there have to be the sincerity of opinion, make sure people are really there for you and not there for themselves. But the last thing I see in the text is the potency of their opinion. There, there is real power in what Jethro advises and counsels Moses to do. Jethro sees there's a problem and tells a solution to his son-in-law. See, you've got to make sure that you've got mentors who are not just problem identifiers, but who are problem solvers. Because it don't take too much to know that a problem exists, but it takes real care and concern to sit with you and work with you and help you find solution to the problems you may not even realize that you have. Here it is. What Jethro advises Moses to do to provide a structure to his governance lasts for the children of Israel all the way until Saul is established as the first monarch of the Israelite people. Jethro provides Moses with a structure that not only sustains Moses, but it sustains Joshua, it sustains Caleb, it sustains Deborah, it sustains all of the judges who fall after the line of Moses because he heeds to the advice of his father-in-law Jethro. His advice had some power. Now here it is. Good mentors, words and opinions have the power to shift you from upholding and maintaining the status quo to take a risk to move into positive change. That, that, that what they offer should always challenge you to move out of what is comfortable to take the necessary risk to have positive change. If they are somebody you consider your mentor and they always say things like, uh, uh, just keep on doing what you're doing. Uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, just ride that horse on home. If, if they say stuff like that, you need to find you a new mentor tomorrow because mentors always are able to see the perspective and help you push to positive change. Uh, can I tell you, you need people speaking into your life uh, that can identify areas where you need some help uh, and be real with you uh, because a mentor is always always pushing you to recognize where positive change must occur. Here it is. Mentors are windows that allow you to look through their life experience to see what's the potential in you on the other side. Mentors are windows that allow you to look through them to see your own potential that exists on the other side. And when you don't have a good mentor, you only have a mirror. And mirrors only provide a reflection of what's already there. But you need some windows that allow you to peer through what's already there and look at the potential on the other side. Make sure you find yourself a window. A window like Eli who told Samuel when God was calling Samuel, he said, boy, the Lord is calling you. And the next time you hear his voice, you just tell him, Lord, here I am, your servant. 
servant, find you a window uh, like Elijah was to Elisha that will let you pick up the mantle that they carried uh, and go on to do better and greater things. Find you a window uh, like Paul was to Timothy that told him to stir up the gift that's inside of you uh, by the laying on of hands uh, because God has not given you the spirit of fear uh, but of power, love, uh, and a sound mind. Find you a mentor, uh, a window uh, like Dr. King was to a John Lewis uh, who taught him you've got to keep on making uh, good trouble. Find you a window uh, like Maya Angelou was to Oprah uh, to let her know that everything you need, uh, the hope is inside of you. Uh, find you a window uh, like a Marvin Jennings uh, and a Victor Cousins is to an Aaron Marble. Uh, find you a window uh, like a William Lloyd Garrison was to Frederick Douglass. Uh, and maybe you've got to search for a new window. Uh, maybe some of your windows have been broken. Uh, maybe you've been betrayed. Uh, maybe you've been suffocated and stifled uh, by jealousy and betrayal. Uh, maybe you're looking for a new window. Uh, but let me tell you, I know a window uh, that'll never shut on you. Uh, I know a window. Uh, he'll walk with you. Uh, he'll talk with you. And he'll tell you that he's your own. I know a window who you can peer through, and he will be your guide. You need a mentor in your life. Maybe you have transitioned to a place in life where it's your time to mentor somebody else. But the qualities that ought to be there are diversity. You don't need somebody that thinks the same way you do, that's struggling with the same things you're struggling with. That's been exposed to the same things you've been exposed to. Diversify your mentor profile. Not only do you need their diversity, play softly, not only do you need their diversity of opinion, you need their sincerity of opinion. You need some folk that truly care for you and not just you but the assignment God has placed on your life if you're a parent you need a mentor who understands the value of being a parent if you are married you need mentors that understand the value of uplifting a marriage. If, 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 if you're trying to transition in your career, if you're trying to figure things, you need to have a mentor that is on your side and cares for you enough to tell you the truth. Tell you when you're wrong. Tell you when you've been ugly. Tell you when you didn't handle it right. Tell you when you need to apologize. That's the type of mentor you need. But lastly, you got to make sure your mentor has got some potency, got some power. Make sure the advice that they give you, while it might be difficult, has been transformative in your life. Make sure that your mentor has fruit of the stuff they tell you in their own life. Hello, somebody. And again you've got some evaluating to do and some reflection to do. But I know somebody that you can start today that'll be your guide and be your comforter. Over 2,000 years ago, he walked this earth. He suffered. He died. He bled. He was betrayed. He was lied on. He was spat on. But he had a major assignment on his life. His assignment was to be our Savior, to be the world's Redeemer. And he accomplished it in spite of all of his difficulties. He wants not only to be your guide this morning, but he wants to be your savior. He wants to be your friend. Maybe you need to be saved today. Today's a good day to give your life to Jesus Christ. Maybe you're looking for a church home. Maybe you're looking for a family of believers to call your own. Jefferson Street is a good place to do it. You might be watching us from all across the country. We know pastors and, and ministries all across the country. We can point you in the right direction. Or you can become a digital disciple of Jefferson Street. Maybe you need prayer and intercession today. Type that in your comments. Text the number on your screen. Our intercessory team, our ministry staff would love to connect with you. Family, it's my prayer as we lift this benediction 
that God would send you to be a mentor or that God would send mentors your way that will help transform your life, that will make the assignment God has given to you that much more effective and that much more great. Father, we thank you that you love us enough that you provide people for our life for every season. Lord, I thank you that you send exactly what we need when we need it. And some now have been struggling in career. Some have been struggling in family. Some have been struggling with what the next step is to be. And Lord, I'm praying that you're sending them mentors who will speak goodness into them, that will speak correctness into them, that will speak life into them that will help them along the way. Lord, some of us know we have value in us because we're older now, because we're retired now, because we've done other things now, we find that we don't have the value we used to. Lord, tap them on the shoulder and let them know that they need to be a mentor to somebody. And Lord, we're asking now that if somebody is not saved, if somebody doesn't know you as Savior, that you would prick their heart and let them know that you love everybody and it's your desire that everyone would come to know you. Lord, we thank you for this church, her ministry, her past, her present, and her future. We're asking now, as always, that the goodness of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit will continue to endow us until you return. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. The church of the living God said amen. We love you, and there's not a thing you can do about it. See you next week.